Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with potato roses. That's right, and to think, all these years you've been eating potato side dishes not shaped like flowers, like some kind of barbarian. Well, my friends, those days are over. And for something that looks and tastes this impressive, I think you're going to be pretty shocked with just how simple the technology is behind these. So let's go ahead and get started with what might be the most important factor, using the right type and size potato. And what I'm recommending we use here is the lovely and talented Yukon Gold Potato, since not only do these have a beautiful color, but I think the starch content of these makes them perfect for this technique. And then above and beyond the actual variety, we want to choose potatoes that are just slightly smaller than the muffin tins we're going to use, which I'm helping you visualize right here by poking this pan with this potato. And then once we have procured potatoes with the proper girth, we will begin this procedure by melting a stick of butter, and we'll use that to generously grease our muffin pan. And you might be thinking, man, a stick of butter, that seems like a lot of butter just to grease a pan. Well, it is. We're only using a little bit for this. We're actually going to save the rest and mix that into our soon-to-be-sliced potatoes. So we'll go ahead and butter that muffin tin with reckless abandon. Like I said, reserving the rest until needed. And once that's set, we can move on to prep our potatoes, which is going to be incredibly easy as long as you have one of these vegetable slicers. If you don't, super hard, if not impossible. So that is the one catch here. And I hope you already have one of those since they're indispensable. But if you don't, I hope you find this video so enticing that you go out and buy one. So we'll start slicing. And I usually discard the first few slices because they're kind of small and all skin. And then what we're going for here is something that's thin but not too thin, which I realize is a terribly inexact measurement. So let's go in for a close up so you can see what I'm talking about. What is that, between a 16th and an eighth? So that is the thickness I'm shooting for right there. And by the way, don't slice these on the table. Slice them into a nice big bowl. Because once these are finished, we have to toss them with the rest of the ingredients. And please, do not try to go all the way down to the end. Okay, potatoes are a lot cheaper than fingertips. So do not lose a fingernail in the name of frugality. In fact, if you're smart, you should probably use the guard. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and slice those up. And then once those are set, we can move on to the seasoning stage. So to our sliced potatoes, we will add some kosher salt and a generous amount of it. The only thing worse than under-seasoned potatoes are undercooked potatoes. Well, actually, that's a tie. They're both terrible, so we'll toss in some salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. And then for a little change of pace, we'll also add some cayenne. And then last but not least, some fresh herb in this is very nice. So this time, I'm going to go with some minced up rosemary. But fresh thyme is also a wonderful choice here. And then once our potatoes are seasoned, we'll go ahead and drizzle in the rest of our melted butter and give that a very thorough mixing with our hands. And so often, mixing a big bowl of stuff like this with your fingers feels really good. This, unfortunately, isn't one of those times. I gotta be honest, I really didn't enjoy that sensation. But we have to take one for the team because there's really not another tool that will do as good a job. And I'm obviously editing for time, but you really gotta spend a few minutes with these and make sure it's thoroughly, thoroughly mixed. Okay, if there's one thing sliced potatoes love to do, it's stick together. So make sure you separate those as best you can and try to get those as evenly coated with our seasoning and butter as humanly possible. And then once that's been accomplished, we will introduce our cheese using the old great toss, great toss, great toss method. So what we'll do is we'll take some Parmesan and grate some over, and then we'll give that another toss with our hands to mix it in. And then once that's incorporated, we will grate some more cheese in and repeat the process. And I'll usually do that step three or four times. It depends on my mood. So you're gonna have to decide exactly how much to add, but I really don't think you can ruin these by adding too much. Of course, some of you will consider that a challenge and try. But anyway, to summarize, we will add as much grated cheese as we think appropriate. And then once that step has been successfully completed, we can go ahead and start filling our muffin tins. And there really is no special technique involved in doing this, other than I guess not letting the pieces of potato kind of fold and bend as they go in. So we will go ahead and transfer those potatoes into our pan. And no, there was no trick photography involved here. My three pounds of potatoes pretty much exactly filled up 12 of these. And then I actually did think of one tip here when you get to the end. It doesn't hurt if you finish up with some of the smaller pieces. Because as you'll see, when these cook, that's what's going to give it that sort of rose petal appearance. And by the way, don't be alarmed, but when you're done, you will have a good amount of water in the bottom of this bowl, which was drawn out by the salt. And as you can see, there is some butter stuck to the sides. So if we want, we could pour off that water, melt that butter, and spoon it over the top of these potatoes. Although I've never done that, but you could. And then once our potatoes have been panned, we'll go ahead and clean those drips up a little bit, at which point these are ready to bake. So let's go ahead and transfer those into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour or until tender. And these are exactly what mine look like 45 minutes later. Check it out. But just because they're pretty and look like roses doesn't mean they're done. So I gave it a test with a metal skewer and determined they were not quite tender yet. I also determined I need to eat that little piece of potato. But anyway, I figured out these needed a little more time. 
But this was already looking gorgeous and I didn't want the edges to get too dark. So what we'll do before we pop this back in is add a piece of foil to the top. So I covered that with foil and I popped mine back in for about 10 minutes. And of course your times may vary, which is why we don't strictly go by time and we test. But anyway, I put mine back in for 10 minutes, at which point it looked like this. It's just as visually stunning as before, but this time the potatoes are cooked. And that's it, our potato roses are done and ready to unmold, which is gonna be surprisingly easy. I just like to take a fork and kind of loosen it up a little bit. And if you get that fork underneath that bottom layer of potato, it should come out quite easily. So we will transfer that onto a plate. And that, at least in my opinion, looks incredible. I mean, come on, that's more beautiful than some actual roses I've seen. And while I will fully admit this technique is mostly about appearance, the taste and texture of this are fantastic also. Of course, because the top is kind of crusty, they are a little challenging to eat just with a fork. But that little problem that's actually not really a problem aside, this really does taste great. And that contrast between those crispy, crusty edges and that tender interior I find highly enjoyable. So I really do love these, and I'm not just talking about the appearance. And as I try another one here with the help of a knife, I'm reminded of just how versatile these are. There are just so many different combinations you could do with the cheeses and the herbs and the seasonings. So don't be afraid to try a little experimentation. I mean, you are the Moses of these roses. So it's your job to lead these into the promised land of flavor. And I'm very confident you will do just that. So I really do hope you give these a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.